there was only one thing in this garden, and it was vines, and just, hang, just hanging down from everywhere on the walls. And from these vines was a fruit, and it was just, it was just fruit all over the place. And the Lord said, he said, this is the fruit of the Spirit, and this is for everyone. And I was like, wow, you know, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it was beautiful. And then I looked over, and there was just masses of people trying to enter into the garden, enter in to eat this fruit. And I looked over here, and there was less and less people trying to get out of the garden. I was like, well, there's a ton of people coming in. How come there's not that many people coming out? Well, I looked over, and there was people that were coming out from, like, the middle and the sides and stuff. I said, well, what is that about? And he says... <laughs> he says, I want the people in this garden. I want them to have the fruit of the Spirit. I want them to have the joy. I want them to have the peace. I want them to have life and love and hope. He said, I want them to have it. And it says, in order for people to come to this garden, you need to go and speak of life. Yeah. Go and speak of love and kindness. And that of a good heart. That of my heart. That of the heart which I have given you. You go and you speak of me. Allow them to receive the word by giving them the word. It may take some time, but that's okay. He said, I have, all, I have eternity. He says, and I'm after their heart. He said, allow them to come into this garden. And as they come into this garden, they need to stay in this garden. They need to stay with me, stay in me. Mm -hmm. He says, those who have stayed with me will exit the garden complete, full of love, full of life, full of happiness, full of everything they could imagine because they have me. They have stayed with me. So there will be those who will stray. There will be those who will try to exit the garden after getting a, a temporary taste of what my love can do. He says, but those of you who stay, who abide in me, who love me as I love you, you will be complete. You will have the peace, the joy, the happiness. You will be stated on my kiss, the kosho, the ete, the makis, the sis, the makoso, the makoso. He said, there's many of you in here today that are looking for peace. You don't have to look anymore. He said, I'm standing in front of you. The garden is open. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is walk through the garden and mm -hmm. take of the fruit. Take of the fruit and eat it. Mm -hmm. Allow it to nourish your body, nourish your soul, restore your heart, restore your mind. Mm -hmm. He says, when you do that and you stay in me and you stay in my garden, he said, there's nothing, nothing in this world, nothing the devil can do, nothing that can bring you down. Because I have lifted you up with my blood. Sure. I have lifted you up with my love. I have lifted you up with my hope. I bless you now. That your life be full of love. Be full of hope. That your heart be restored. And be full of happiness. The blessings of the Lord will shine upon you. And they will fill your cups and overflow. And as they overflow, he said, you don't hold it to yourself. You take those blessings and you, and you give. And you give, and you give, and you give. And as you give, I will bestow more blessings upon you. Yeah. And your life will be so consumed with happiness and love and yeah. peace and joy that you will have nothing to do but to declare my glory. Yeah. Declare my glory to my people. Thank you, Father. And allow my light to shine in this world. Thank you, Father. In the, in the Hebrew tradition, <clears throat> mystical tradition, prophetic, um, a garden, the garden of Eden represented the Shekinah, the Holy Spirit. You know, I know we think of the garden of Eden, and I'm not saying it's not, it was not a physical place, it is, it was. 
Yeah. But the our garden represents the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory. Sure. And, um, and, by, and Paul talks in Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. So as you abide in that garden, then you're able to partake of the, the fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, faith, faithfulness. Uh, in other words, you, even, even as, you know, they're not physical fruit, they represent something that you can take, that's right. you can consume and put on the inside of you that will, you'll be able to enjoy their taste. The taste of love, the taste of faithfulness, the taste of kindness. And not only that, but they, you know, food is not just for pleasure. Food is to nourish the body, to enable you to live, mm -hmm. and then to function and to serve. And, I, and I, in my spirit, I sense what, what, what the Lord was showing him was just that, that garden coming in, not many going out. Um, because they're going, the ones going out were fulfilled. They learned how to, to abide. And so that their, their time was not to go out. And uh, I asked him to, I asked, I asked him to do that as we begin to worship the Lord. The <clears throat> seeing, seeing things started, you know. And, uh, and one thing that I saw, I asked him, confirmed it. I, I saw a sense of angel. I saw Jesus come in and he walked over and stood and I had my eyes closed. I was seeing this with my eyes closed. And, and he come he come and stood in front of him and started talking to him. And I asked him, he said, yeah, he was he was he took him up and showed him some life. So I mean it's the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Gosh, good. <clears throat> Praise God. The Lord's wild. Wow. Amen. Praise God. We have a lot, you know, the worship attracts a lot of angelic activity and attracts a lot of, uh, of the saints. I don't know where you stand with that. I'm not, you know. I'm not, you're, talking, well, you, you're talking about the dead people, now. I'm not talking about living people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They're alive. I think we need to get, get a hold of that, the fact that we're mm -hmm. not communicating. The Bible says not to communicate with the dead. Right. But uh, those that die in Christ are not dead. Amen. That's right. That's right. So praise God. I want to, uh, and I'm not, I'm a very careful. This, uh, I, I did this one time and just freaked the man out. <laughs> I told him, I told him I saw his father standing before him and, and tell him he was proud of him. And the guy just, I never saw the guy again. He just like, <laughs> looked at him. I don't know if he thought he, I don't know what he thought. But when we were, when we were worshiping, your mom passed away, didn't you? Did she pass this year? Was it last year? Last year, maybe. Um, well, I saw a, a, a black lady, and, but she wasn't old. How old was your mom? She, she passed. 87. 87. Well, at some round, I knew it was your mom, but she didn't look 87. She looked like maybe about 30 something years old. And, uh, and she was looking at. She, she was looking at you, and she, was, she had a smile on her face. She was so proud of it. And she didn't speak to me. <clears throat> but I, I could just, you know, sometimes you pick up, and she said, she just wanted you to know. How proud she is of you, and that she's watching, 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 watching all this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm putting it up to set you. I don't know. Time to get the people freaked out. Amen. You, sister. Thanks. A chant up you recognize I'm talking to you. You. The Lord's <laughs> before the service. Uh, <clears throat> he said he said two things and I don't I don't quite understand that he's gonna make sense to you. First of all he said scholarship. What grade are you in? Ninth right. grade. Okay. Well he he said the word scholarship. Do you have a desire to go to college? 
Okay, the Lord's going to give you a, a, a make a way for you. Now you have to apply yourself. It's not going to be an thing, but there's going to be a scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the second thing, I, I don't know much about you really. You know that. I love you. I see you pretty little place. But uh, uh, what sort of physician mean to you? You know, having a desire to be a physician or a doctor. You, know. you do? You do desire to be a doctor? Amen. Okay, well, you need to work hard, and the Lord will give you a scholarship and to, to fulfill your job, but it's not going to be an easy road now. Don't you understand that? But you see, when, when we prophesy, we're looking at the scroll that God's got for your life. Amen? I'm reading the scroll, a piece of your scroll. That doesn't mean it's automatic. That's right. That's what we need to understand. People don't understand our prophecy. Really what we call personal prophecy is that the Lord allows us to read somebody's scroll, mm -hmm. a portion of <laughs> scroll, their, their life, what he's, he's playing for you. And unfortunately, uh, because of, of Calvinism and things, people think it's got to be automatic. But the thing is, this is good. If you'll just cooperate with him Amen. and believe him, then, then you've got this, these vast resources of angels and people that are going to help you. That's right. Amen. But you know, don't be like most people that say, "Well, if it's God, it's God." It is God. I didn't know that about you. Did have you ever told me anything about that? Okay. All right. Now, so I'm on the roll. So, Ilwin, Thank you. you need to come here. Now, this, I don't, I don't know what uh, you better stand by. Her. I, you don't have to do anything else. I don't need to. But I heard this. I heard. Then this is where you came in because I know you came in later. <laughs> uh, I wasn't looking. At so. uh, the the Lord said, uh, first of all, that the, the word came to him, mercy. Uh, in Hebrews, kasad, kasad, mercy. There's a, a the Lord wants to balance out in your life. You lean, you're like you're a lot like me. You, you lean towards judgment. And in, in, in the tree of life, <clears throat> a, God wants balance for the kingdom to come. Sure. And then on one side of the tree of life, there's judgment. On one side, there's mercy. And uh, we usually tend to lean on one side or the other. And so. Uh, you like your mother. She's she's very merciful. She she leans towards mercy sometimes over. I mean I mean I'm usually very judge judgmental. When I say judgmental, I'm not talking about you're condemning people, but you you see things and you call a spade a spade or whatever. That's not an incorrect term. I'm not trying to be derogatory. But the Lord says I'm going to bring. I I'm I'm endeavoring. And I'm loosing an angel to begin to bring balance in your life, to balance mercy with judgment. Many times you err on the side of you, you, you judge, and then you start feeling bad about yourself because you've judged. And then you condemn yourself, and then the enemy comes in and beats you up. Is that right? And the Lord says, not, not your judgment is of the Lord. You're seeing things. But he's going to call Shika. <laughs> He's going to cause an angel of mercy to come and begin to minister to you mercy. And the way he's going to do that is to show you mercy. There's going to be a lot of mercy poured out on you this year and a lot of mercy poured out on your family. And and that's and it's going to be a balance. So you might go overboard on to the mercy side for a while. Can you remember what I'm saying? Don't you remember what I'm saying? The Lord wants balance. See, in the sight of the Lord, an unjust balance is an abomination. That's what that means. He wants like balance. And I'm not talking about balance an unbelief of faith. That's what people can say you need to come into balance, you know, that's you know it's all faith. Amen. So so this 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 is the year of mercy and the year of teaching you the mercy. There's a uh, there's an inherited anointing uh that's yours. 
and it's there for you to take or reject what it's there. And I would encourage you to, to pray about it. Amen? So I'm just thank I bless you right now. God, I'm going to bless you. Father, I loose that angel of mercy right now to begin to bring balance to her life. I speak to her, <clears throat> the tree of life in her, in her heart, her spirit. And I and speak uh, not only with the wisdom and understanding that you've given her, Lord, but you bring a, a balance of mercy in her heart, Father. And the Lord says that I've even brought people. I've brought, this is why you have so many people come into your life that that uh, there's nothing you can do but show mercy to them. You're judging, you can't, you can't change them. And the judging can't, doesn't help anything, makes you miserable. And uh, so when you get to this, learn this mercy, suddenly a lot of these people that are, that are bugging you are going to do or God's going to change them or take them out of your life. And, and, uh, it, it, but you won't care by that time anyway. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. Let's do the offering. Do the offering. There's a part of your brain that actually perceives when you give that you're receiving. So if you give judgment, you receive judgment. Sure. You, your brain, it's a part of your brain that is actually is built like that. It can't tell, it can't tell by time, space. It's, it's, you think it's numb, but it's not. It's just it's that it's that part of your brain that's the the giving and receiving part, and it doesn't designate. It says whatever you give out, it it perceives as you receive. So if you criticize a lot, you're going to perceive every, even compliments as criticism. Amen. So that's why Jesus said it's better to give than receive. He knew he was talking about. It. I figured this out. If we just really just go by faith, do what Jesus said, if sooner or later, he'll show us, he'll give us understanding. But but you can you can survive a long while just doing what he said. Amen. 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 So did you? Go ahead. Oh God. No supper for me. Look at it. Go ahead and do it. You said what you doing? I just talked to No condemnation. I don't know. I'm scared of it. Well, that's what I was going to say about giving. Better to give than receive. And Jesus said, Give, and it'll be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over, Amen. and we'll give unto your bosom. And I was just going to share a short little uh, a testimony about giving. But, see, when you help, hold your hand out to give, you then that hand that's held out is also the hand that can receive back. Sure. And if you're holding your hand like this, you can't receive back. If you're holding it and not releasing it, then you're not going to be able to receive back. Hmm. And the uh, I was going to tell one time, uh, we had a friend that needed a, um, this is way a long time ago, that needed a cassette tape player. And we had a, a stereo system that had a cassette tape player in it. And so the Lord put on Richard's heart, we need to give them this, this cassette, this system we have. And, you know, we were real proud of it. We spent a lot of money on it. it had speakers and all this neat stuff. And, and so but we went ahead and we gave it to them. You're from a boss. It was actually Richard's <laughs> boss, yeah. And we went ahead and gave it to them. And the very next day, the very next day, and, and this, I'm going to say this, this system costs us $200. This was back in the 80s. The very next day, a friend of ours came up to us. He never knew that we'd done that, had anything about this. Handed us a check for $200. Yeah, and she was a, uh, she was a single woman. She was divorced. She was raising, you know, had two, three kids she was raising. And she came up and gave us this check for $200. The very next day. You know, and, and so when... When you listen to God and, and He tells you to do something, He's going to bless you back. That's the whole idea of doing it because He wants to bless you. He wants you to open your heart to Him and listen to Him, and then He wants to turn around and bless you back. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm not going to say that. I say that all the time. I'm trying not to say that anymore. What's that? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 you say that? Hallelujah, anyway. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's good. Amen. So let's get ready to give our tithes and offerings unto Him. Say hallelujah. Thank you. Okay. I also want to say this. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. That's right. So he's with us all the time through the good time and the bad times. Even when you feel like he's not there, he's still right there. Holy Spirit is right there with you. Just like that song, he's closer than our skin. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, let's do our confession. We believe with our hearts we believe with our and confess with our mouths that we are believing for. We are believing for. Hallelujah. And, and I want to say this too. It says when two or more are gathered in his name, he's here with us. <laughs> and so he is with us right now. Amen. He's hearing us. And if we're, if we're in agreement and we're in agreement with this word, it says when two or more agree on earth is touching anything it'll be done for us by our father which is in heaven yeah. so if we're agreeing with what we're saying we're saying with our heart and our and speaking it i mean speaking out with our mouth and we're agreeing then god's agreeing with us and it, and it says you shall have what you're saying yeah. hallelujah yeah. all right so let's say our confession we believe with our hearts and confess with our mouths that we are believing for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, increased benefits, ideas for new inventions, and business opportunities, estates and settlements. Matthew 18, verse 21. Matthew 18, 21. If you ain't got a Bible, it's bottles in the back right here. I'm so glad to see you. 18, 21. Matthew 18, 21. Matthew 18, 21. Thank you. Who said that? Oh, yo. Okay. A kid. Uh, nada. I just say the nada because it means there's nothing. Uh, uh, is there another word you can say to respond to gracias? Gracias? If I say, is there, is there another word besides denada? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I just say denada. It doesn't offend me. Yeah. Even though it means it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Y'all follow me, I'll find you. Matthew 18, 21. And uh, somebody correct me. And Bucket's not there. She, she can't correct me if I'm on the wrong, in the wrong chapter or verse. Or uh, verse 21. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin, <clears throat> will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He asked that question. How many of y'all ever ask that question? How long do I get to keep forgiving this jerk? <laughs> well, Peter was just being real. You know? He said, then Peter came up and said to him, said to him, Lord, how often will, will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Uh, as many as seven times? Now, Peter had a problem with pride. There's no doubt about it. You know? And he got dealt with. That's what happened to him when he portrayed Jesus. And you know, he was, God was dealing with his pride. 
uh, Satan was sifting, sifting him as wheat. He was getting all that chaff out of him. Uh, and he said, he thought he was doing a big deal. You know? <clears throat> he said, how many times should I forgive him? He said, seven times? He thought he was doing a big deal. And Jesus said to him, Jesus will always deflate your balloon. <laughs> Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. Now this is in one day. Jesus always expects more out of us than is humanly possible. Remember that. He always expects more out of you than, than is humanly possible. That sounds crazy to because it places you in a position where you 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 have the opportunity. I won't say you have to, because some people choose not to. You you have the opportunity to act, to cry out to him and say, Lord, I can't do this. That's just the word he's been waiting for it is. Because that by that that puts you in a place of first repentance. Because your mind's changed. You thought you could do it, and now you realize you can't do it. So that's what repentance is. You change your mind. And, and it's a change for the better. Listen. And then the second thing it causes you to be able to do is to uh, be in a position to receive grace. There you go. Because God gives <coughs> grace to the humble. That's right. And he resists the proud. And, God lo and the Lord loves you so much that he will... If you won't humble yourself, he will humble you. He's not trying to embarrass you or make you look bad, but he's he, he put he's put you in a position where you 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 humility is actually you define humility as this. It's seeing things as they really are. Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Just that's what humility is, is seeing things like they really are. Not the way some man says they are. You think they are the way God says. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Humble yourself under the, under the hand of God. Humble yourself under the hand of God, and He will exalt you. Whenever the Bible talks about the hand of God, the hand of God came upon a prophet, or the heaven of the glory of God right. came upon. You know, it, it, sometimes it wouldn't. Have, they wouldn't all to all together. Oh man, golly, shoot! They're coming out of me. You know, this is weird. They can't tell. They can't tell. It's, it's like getting out of an electric car or something. <laughs> uh, now I'm getting drunk. I gotta quit. Yeah. I can't teach. Yeah. Uh, hmm. What was the saying? Mm. You know what? You don't remember what I was talking about. about humility. Humility. Yeah. Oh, the hand of God. Uh, that's sometimes the hand of God. He says, "Humble yourself under the hand of God, and He'll exalt you." In other words, sometimes the hand of God feels like it's <coughs> being you being held down. You know, and He's actually holding you down until you say, "Uncle." <laughs> you know, don't you, you say, "Okay, Lord, I, I realize that I can't do it." Without you, sure. I've been trying to. I didn't realize it really, and um, <laughs> and then he says, "Okay," and then he takes his hand off of you, puts it under you, and lifts you up. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. And His mercy endures forever. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> I did. He said seventy times seven. Therefore, and then he went on and said, "Gave him, gave him a story." Sure. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who set, wished to settle accounts with his servants. You realize there will be an account settlement coming up mm -hmm. in your destiny. Sure. When he offed and, and he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now look this up. You probably looked it up, heard preachers say this. 10,000 talents. Now this word does not have anything to do with your talents, like being able to play the guitar or the talents was a was a, uh, a weight of money, gold or silver, and I don't know what it was. But anyway, this the ten thousand talents was was equivalent to uh, twenty years of of uh, uh, earnings. Mm -hmm. And back then, people didn't live long. You know, if you lived before, you were doing real good. I think the average lifespan was twenty something. Mm -hmm. 
You know, people didn't live that long time back then. You know, like, how many remember that when they said, you know, when Jesus said to the Pharisees, he says, he says, I saw Abraham's day. Remember that? And they said, how can you, you not being 60 or whatever, yeah. they come, because they considered him, because he was, Jesus was 30 something years old, that was an old man, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Food in a limo. Hmm. So this, what this, this represents is, this man owed a whole lot, it would take him a lifetime to pay that debt off. It's kind of like student loans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe some of these people, you know, you still pay back the state of loans like from 20 years ago, you know. Mm-hmm. Only debt, there's, the state of loans, for the obviously don't know, is the only debt that you can't go use bankruptcy on. Hmm. Hmm. They got it all figured out, but it's a racket. Yeah. <clears throat> So, can you understand his position as man? He began to, the, the king began to settle accounts, and he, he brought, there was one brought to him that owed him a lifetime of, of, of a, everything he could earn in his lifetime mm-hmm. was owed. He owed his life, mm-hmm. literally owed his life. And since he could not pay, his master <coughs> ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all he had and payments to be made. Do you think that's real cruel? That was actually one of the reasons that you know, we didn't have uh, what, uh, our system of government in the United States is in England, yeah. you have debtor's prison. If you, had a, you owed a debt and you couldn't pay it, you went to jail. Do you understand it? And they said, why in Mexico? Mm-hmm. Cause you know, my niece called me up and said, "We, we, we, we're, we're the electric bill is due. We ain't got nobody to pay it." She says, "That will come get us." Mm-hmm. It don't make no sense. How you gonna pay a bill in jail? Right. But nevertheless, it, you know they gonna put you in jail if you owe money. Mm-hmm. Here in the, in the United States, you know, also what a great system they came up with that, that, that you cannot be put in jail for debt. Amen. Now the IRS can kill you, but. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a different set of mafia, and this is on YouTube, so I know I just messed up. <laughs> but they don't, you know, I don't think the, the big people are watching me anyway, so where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> said, we quit what you say on the, uh, to quit saying it. Let's do what you're saying. So they ordered, they just, they ordered to him to be sold, his wife and his children and all he had, and payment made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, have patience with me and I'll pay you everything. You know, he's lying, he knows he can't pay it, but he's just like, I, I do, you know, you'll, you'll say all that get out of stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, be patient with me and I'll pay everything and out of pity for him. Out of pity, out of mercy, mm-hmm. the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. Amen. Cool. Can you imagine that? Amen. Somebody releasing you from a lifetime of debt. Amen. Can you what a blessing it is? Yeah. Golly, man. I don't think we take long enough to think about some of this stuff. This man was, he was getting ready. He, he couldn't pay it off. He was getting ready to be thrown in jail. They were going to sell his wife and his children as slaves for somebody to, to no telling, you know, they do anything, a slave, but you know, they can do anything you want to. Well, they could sleep with his wife, they could sleep with his kids, they could, some pervert could get a hold of him. You, you can't imagine what going through this man's mind. And he, and he, he humbled himself and he begged. He's got to have been a, a, a big time, big shot, but because he wouldn't could have been able to owe that much money. You know, poor people don't owe that much money. Yeah. Don't give him credit. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm yeah. Think about this. And he said, he said, he released him. They'd already clapped him in irons here, dragged him off. <laughs> released him and forgave him the debt. And when the same servant, now listen. When the same servant, the same man went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, which is like five days' wages. 
five days, wasn't it? And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I'll pay you. But he refused. And he went and put him in prison until he could pay the debt. Now, man, I'll tell you that right there. That classifies somebody as a real a-hole. Amen. You're right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't care who you are. But you, you, now you go back. Holy Spirit, do you think? <laughs> he refused, put him in prison until he went. And when his fellow servants saw that what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. Just like you would. You, I just got distressed. You thought, what's God? What is it? And he went and reported to the master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, and he called us, he said, You wicked servant. Mm -hmm. You wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you pled with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant Amen. as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. Mm. So also, it's Jesus talking, so also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive. Listen to me very carefully. Jesus said this, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Amen. And this causes, theologically, you think, you know, well, I believe, I'm a grace man. I believe in grace, you know. I believe in the forgiveness of sin. I believe, as far as mankind is concerned, God's wiped out all the sin. It's paid for us. It's up to any, anybody can receive that free gift. But we're talking about kingdom now. So a lot of confusion in the Bible when, when, when you read, Paul said, you know, he says one place, he says, you know, homosexuals, whoremongers, drunkards, uh, let's go down a list of people which names about, about half the church. <clears throat> not this church, but, but you know, I'm talking about it. He said, we'll not have a part in the kingdom. Now, now and it brought, see, we're so heavenly taught about going to heaven. He said, well, you mean that those people can't go to heaven? Of course, we focus, he's focus in on homosexuals or something, something that scares us. But he also said drunkards, talks about gossip, liars. Huh? Liars. Liars. That's half the preachers right there, three quarters. Mm -hmm. And they're not me. <laughs> uh, don't, don't you think, it doesn't come around, you, talk, you mean they can't go to heaven? It's not talking about that, he says, he said they won't have any part of the kingdom. Amen. Now, to a Jew, do you understand this? Uh, to a Jew, the kingdom, is the world to come. They call it, they actually call it the world that's coming. That's the restoration of the earth. That's paradise come back to earth. That's, 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 that's uh, the garden of Eden. Eden is actually the Holy Spirit. So that this is to the to Jews. And our and our our faith came from our <laughs> Jewish culture. And you have to realize that Paul was a Jewish rabbi. And he was trained under one of the pro most prominent rabbis that, it, that was on the face of the earth. And, and Jews knew some stuff. They knew some stuff that would scare the pants off for a lot of Christians. They were the keepers and the guard guardians of the oracles of God, the mysteries of God. Christians, most Christians, churches don't teach you about anything about the way things work. The world to come was was the, the you know the, the Bible says that the glory God the Lord said twice He says my glory shall fill the earth or and in another place says my the, the knowledge of my glory shall fill cover the earth as the waters do the same mm -hmm. the glory the kabod the heaviness of God the, the hand of God that is the shekinah the glory the Holy Ghost hello hi everybody heart everybody heart good night good. 
She's a heart doctor. Doctor, she's a doctor. Okay. <laughs> I call her a doctor. <laughs> you see, it's out of Do you understand? So when, when Paul when Paul was saying this, the Jews not only believed in the coming, of, uh, and they still and they're still looking for the Messiah. Bless their hearts. They're, I mean, I, they, they, the, the people I read are always talking about the Messiah. Mm. They, they just can't wait for the Messiah to come. And he, and we, would, he has come. Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. <clears throat> but Paul goes on in, in Romans to explain. He said that God blinded their eyes, yeah. so, so we could get in. <clears throat> And then he goes on to say that, that one day the veil will be lifted and he said, all Israel will show me his name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now they're not going to be saved a different way. It's not, not through another way, but Jesus says another way. But they're going to recognize him as Messiah. Amen. Right. You understand? You know what Messiah means? The Christ. The, Christ, the anointed one. The Christ. The Messiah. I'm not saying it. I just, oh, you have to get a little flame in the juice. That's why I can speak Hebrew very well. We're <laughs> not making fun. <laughs> Yo, she and Bob. Jesus. Yo, she and Bob. Anyway, see, I've got drunk. See, I, I'm, yeah, I appreciate y'all being patient with me. I'm getting somewhere. If I can just keep my mind. <laughs> They say the, the kingdom is coming. It's, it's not the kingdom. It's like an event in the future. They say it is the kingdom coming. Mm -hmm. It's continually coming. Mm -hmm. See, you know, that's what we are. Like this morning, some of us got caught up in worship and, and started, and the kingdom was coming. You understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm saying stuff like, wow, wow. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to be real careful. I'm, I think it's, it's really, you need to be real careful about bragging about saying stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not bragging, but I mean, I think, golly, I ain't told you. I mean, never mind. Because, you know, I, I don't mind my own business. All right? <laughs> I'm not my own business. I, I didn't ask to see this. <laughs> but I didn't have more witnesses to see you. <laughs> you know, at least she, she wanted that, and, and even, and, and you, I can't remember, did Jesus go up to you, talk to you, and he said, yes, no, I said, I'm not going to ask In the mouth of two or three witnesses. I think, I, I mean, I'm saying, well, how come Jesus won't talk to me? <laughs> Don't you know I'm more spiritual than <laughs> No, I didn't say, I was, I, I was happy for you. I, <laughs> I'm happy for you. Huh? A little dead one. Still a plant Oh, anyway, this, the kingdom coming. So, this, when Paul's talking about it, he says uh, that you'll have no part in the Those people will not have any part in the kingdom. You can't experience the presence of God when you're drunk. I mean, where you can. <laughs> I'm not talking about, but if you're like a habitual, like drunkard, mm -hmm. yeah. or habitual, you're a habitual, uh, you're in sin habitually, and you know you're in sin, you won't, you won't experience the presence of God. Sure. Right. right. And that's what Paul's talking about. He didn't say you're not going to help him. That's right. So that's it. In our office is south or what? It's like it's all about going to heaven. As soon as you get your ticket punched to go to heaven, then you go do what the heck you want to do, you know? I do what I do because I want to live in a daily presence Amen. of God. Right. And I don't, I'm not going around drunk all the time in the Holy Ghost. I mean, I have, I talk to you. you know, I went to bed last night flying and woke up feeling like me, you know, like a dog, you know? I'm going, God, I wish I'd stayed up all night. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be tired, but you know, I just got to keep it going. Yeah. Isn't it weird? I can go to sleep like, you know, and wake up in the morning like, <laughs> what happens? Somebody, if y'all figure it out, tell me. I'll help me out. But now that should give you some relief. God's got a lot of mercy. Amen. 
But see, the, see the, the, if, until you experience the presence of God and get a taste of the presence, then you, you, you know, I, I want to go to heaven when I die. I know, I know I won't go to heaven. But you know, what, whatever southern heaven is, like chicken place. <laughs> But but I want to enjoy his presence every day. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now you know, as much as I can I do. Amen. I wanna I wanna see he's in me. That's right, that's right. You've been you know how Paul said this, he said, You've been sealed with the promise. He said, Great don't he said, Don't in the face, he said, Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, because he, he's you've been sealed. Amen. With the Holy Spirit. That's his guarantee. If you went back to the Old Testament, even though the Jews were in exile for 40 years, they wandered because they never could go in the promised land because they messed up. All 40 years, and, and during the day, the cloud, the Shekinah, was, they could see it. And at night, it turned into a pillar of fire. It was a witness, it was a seal that God's faithful. You understand? Even though they weren't going to get to go in, their children were going to go in. That you need to realize that the Holy, the precious Holy Spirit that God's poured out of you and given you is His seal, His guarantee. That's His, his guarantee. That he's with you, he's faithful, and he's going to do what he says. Amen. That's why. That's why it says in Jude, it says, building yourself up upon your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Every time you pray in the Spirit, the praying tongue, you're reminding, you're being reminded that the Holy Spirit's living in you. Amen. People say, "What's the value of praying tongues?" Well, that right there is a value. Amen. When you start getting down, you know, like, where's God? He's left me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a really bad situation. If you can begin to, to pray in the Spirit, worship God, and realize, you know, God's not left me. You know, they can look at that. You know, they, they're in a natural. They can look up and see that cloud. Mm. See that, that, that tent, and they can see that, I don't know how far it went up. And just that, we, we're not talking about a cumulus something. We're talking about a cloud that was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. That was a, a ruach. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can you imagine what it was like to get around that cloud? Uh, mm. oh, come on. It was, it was, they went 40 years. They, the clothes didn't even wear out. That's right. Right. Shoes didn't wear out. That's a big deal, man. I'm talking about the glory. Keep your clothes clean. Amen. Keep your shoes, you know, you ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I like that. I want to be able to find your shoes. <laughs> Gee, that's a downer. A bummer. Huh? <laughs> Declare war. Touch not God's <laughs> anointing. There are shoe shops out in the wilderness anyway. That's right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I hate that trick. No new clothes either. All right, so that's enough. Be quiet. <laughs> Turn, turn one of the two up uh, to Matthew 18, 7. Basically, you won't have far to go back with you. We're here in Matthew 18 anyway. And I think so. <coughs> Please be there. In my, this translation I've got doesn't even translate it that way. So. <laughs> That's a moment. Matthew 18, 7, I'm going to read that through the King James, but it does actually, this is an the New English something. Uh, he said, Matthew 18, 7 says, Woe unto the world because of offenses. Take, say, woe. Whoa. Whoa. But it, it must needs be that offenses come. 
but woe to the man by whom the offense cometh, as King James. Because the word in the original language is an offense, a scandal on. Y'all yeah, heard this before, right? Scandal on. The word offense is scandal on. That's where you get the word scandal from. Mm -hmm. Scandal, a good scandal is something you can talk about, gossip about, judge, condemn, whatever. Now, I'll tell you now, what are we, now we've so far we've covered the fact that Jesus is saying it's very important for you to forgive. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, this, is, this is really important now. I'm teaching stuff. You, we talked about last week about, about, about uh, uh, tuning our hearts. Remember last Saturday, last Sunday, tuning your hearts to God? Mm -hmm. right. Well, this is, I mean, this is definitely a major tuner here. Is forgiveness. That's right. Mm -hmm. he, and, but, and here Jesus is saying, he says, he says, offenses must come. So it ain't nowhere on this planet you can go that there's not going to be some somebody, an offense waiting for you. Yeah. A scandal on. <laughs> to get it out of your mind, you know, I'm leaving this job, getting out of here, I'm tired of this, I, I get, I'm leaving this church. Well, that's stupid. I, that pastor offends me, he just offends me, just the way he looks offends me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he preaches too long. <laughs> He's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm offended. You're offending me. It must needs be come, though. <laughs> if I were not drunk right now, I would be offended. <laughs> no. Listen, I'm trying to get through. <laughs> do, do something with woman over there. <laughs> Have not, not read in the Word of God. <laughs> Let the woman be silent and chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap, I just messed up in there. I'll offend it. See, it had to come. It's an example. There you go. There you go. There you go. I had to, now you're offended. Forgive you got to forgive me. She's looking back at the clock. Look at her, get out of here. <laughs> the offense is going to come. I know offenses bother you, they bother me. I get offended. Sure. You can't, you, you're not going to, I don't, now, now I could be wrong, but you're never going to get over the fact that, you know, just like your skin, I don't want to pinch him, I pinch you, I pinch you, <laughs> he's tough, and he can practice, but I mean, if I pull a little, does that hurt? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Okay. No matter how much, how many times I go and pull his hair, that's going to hurt. Now, he, can, he has to deal with that. He can either slap me, make me quit, or just let me do it, forgive me, order. But it's going to hurt. Offenses are going to always come. They're, not, say, say, they're always going to come. <laughs> but woe to them to bring them. So you ought to feel sorry. If you get somebody offends you, you ought to feel sorry for them because the woe is coming to them first. Amen. When Jesus says whoa, I don't know what it means in the Greek or Hebrew, but it's bad. Because I know in Revelation it says whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey. So, they're going to come. Get it set in your heart. They're going to come. Don't get caught off guard. I can't believe they said, how many said I can't believe they said that. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. Why can't you? You, you, did, you don't you read the Bible? That's right. It says they're going to come. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, a scandal on is going to come into your life. Scandal on, say, scandal on. I, I, I've heard many people uh, 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 teach on this, but this, this lady from South Africa did it the best because she did it from fact. She lived in South Africa. She said they had, they said the biggest pest they had were these, these little monkeys. They were constantly coming in and getting in the house, little monkeys, and stealing the food, stealing stuff, messing up stuff. And they just, she said, you know, y'all might think monkeys are cute, but it, where we live, monkeys are a pain in the rear end. We, you know, we just try to get rid of them. It's hard to catch them. She said, but there's a way, this is the way we catch them. We make a scandal on them. Mm -hmm. We take pumpkins, gourds, 
Monkeys love pumpkin seeds. We should cut a little hole just big enough for the monkey. Can, you've heard, probably heard from a telling some other way, but this, this, was, this woman said this, she did it. Did her height. Cut a hole big enough in that pumpkin, what they call pumpkins, some kind of squash, for that monkey to get its hand in there, <clears throat> to get a hole to try to get those seeds. They love those seeds. Then, the thing is about monkeys, they will not let go. Mm. And so when they go to pull their hand out with the seeds, the, 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 the empty hand can go in, the hand with something in it can't come out. And she said, it's just the easiest thing, it's the funniest thing. You go out in the yard and you got your trap set up and there's monkeys sitting out there and they're just sitting there. <laughs> with it like a pumpkin. <laughs> and it's too big really to put in there. It's an easy kitchen. You've been sorry for the stinking monkey. And he said, they, yeah, they do. She said, they do. She brought that shoe. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I made all the animal lovers really bad then. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, the way, that's the way we are. That's what Jesus is talking about. Right. It's a trap. We're not, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. We were teaching out about the, the, the armor of God. Don't be ignorant. He has his devices, right. his schemes. This is one of his number one top ten schemes. Yeah. Scandalon. He gets ill, ill, ill offensive. is out there. It's going to come. Mm -hmm. You're going to go and you're going to grab it. Mm -hmm. You take Offense. Right. Mm -hmm. Say, take offense. Offense don't jump. Offense don't jump off on you and and jump you in an alley. That's mug. <laughs> you take offense. Mm -hmm. Take offense. You have to be like that monkey. You got to stick your hand in that hole mm -hmm. to get them goodies. <laughs> But this is the deal. What separates you from the monkey, hopefully, <laughs> is you've got enough sense to let go of the dang offense. Mm -hmm. So somebody ain't gonna come out there and shoot you. That's right, yeah. <laughs> now I'm asking you a question. And you got more sense than the monkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know what, I've been around a lot of y'all. <laughs> and I, sometimes I've seen y'all get offended and say, God bless some of you watch on YouTube that quit coming to church but still want the videos. God bless you. <laughs> and I love you, but I'm trying to tell you, you, I, you you've taken offense. And, and somebody... And you're holding over the pumpkin, and the devils will just walk up and, and, and get you. But mm, right. get you for sickness, disease, bankruptcy, divorce, mm. name it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you sit there with it. You can't do that because you got the stupid pumpkin. Mm. <laughs> Y'all will never forget this, man. Never. I don't want you to ever forget it. I want you to say, next time somebody comes up to defend you, I want to help this beast. I, I, I prophesied into existence. I call it out of, out of the spirit realm into the material kingdom. A vision is going to appear to you. Are you standing there, hairy as a monkey, with your hand in a pumpkin, and you're going to go, you're going to let go of it. Amen. And you're going to walk away and the devil's going to go, golly, I lost that one. <laughs> That's worth the price of admission. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Baby, come on. You deal with it all the time. That's what makes you depressed. It makes you sick. It makes you this. I ain't like it. And, you know, I mean, and quit telling you, if somebody's sick, you want to be able to show that they're doing for you. It might be, it may not. They might just got around somebody and got sick. I don't know. I'm not blaming everybody on the devil. Sure. Because that ain't got nothing to do with the devil. That's yeah. your, oh my, indiscretion. That's right. And not letting go of offense. That's another good word to say. Say, let it go. Let, let it go. go. Let it go. Say, let it go. Let it go. You say, well, I just can't do it, Lord. I can't do it. I can't do it. 
I'll tell nine people I've counseled and tell you. I said, you need to forgive that person. I can't. I can't. I can't. And I say, I said, no, you can't. For God's grace, if you'll ask him, he'll help you. And, and at least, you know, say it out of your mouth. It, it does, let me say it, say it out of your mouth. You picture what I'm doing good. Well, it does. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the first step. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I'll forgive them. I learned this a long time ago when I first got, came to the Lord. It was in the Presbyterian Church. Her dad had a, a group of, we didn't know they were talking, talking charismatics, had to come into this Presbyterian Church. And they, that's what they taught on forgiving. <clears throat> and I remember forgiving my mom. <clears throat> I, and my mom was there. She was at the meeting. When she was meeting, she goes, she was at our house. And I remember going to her and I, and it was, I must have freaked her out. I said, Mom, I just want to forgive you. Because she's old time, old school, you know, Methodist, you know, people that talk about God. And I asked her, I said, Mom, I'm, I want to forgive you. And I didn't say I want, I want to ask your forgiveness. I said, I want to forgive you. Mm -hmm. And that really freaked her out. Like, forgive me, what did I do? <laughs> And, 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 and you know this, if you don't, I'm going to tell you. Most of the time when people get offended, the people that offend them don't have any idea that they've offended them. That's right. Because I get to that scripture before we go. And you've got to understand that, that, that people are not near as bright as you think they are. <laughs> Especially me. I mean, I, I'm not proud of it. I, I have a ministry sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to claim that. Chris is sitting back there. She'll, she'll shut that. Test. <laughs> Thank God for it. I'm not going to speak to that. But we all do that. We all do offend people. Unknowingly, unwittingly. Sometimes we do it just because we're mad. Or we're offended ourselves and we offend others. Mm -hmm. Offended people offend others. That's right. That's right. Amen. God have mercy on her soul. Amen. Amen. But I, I, I just want to, what I, I feel the Lord wants to us to say today is that, that this is a, a trap. People, we, we don't think we can forgive somebody because we, we equate forgiving with letting people off the hook. They need to be punished for what they did. And we want to see them punished. Well, what, don't, what we don't realize is, see, we're, 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 we're taking the place of God. That's right. He says this. He says, vengeance is mine. Amen. I will repay. He, 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 see, God's a just God. So people don't realize that when you say God's a just God, that means God will settle the counts. Amen. That's right. Now, we like that when we think about settling accounts with somebody that done something to us. But we get to also remember if he's, he's a God that settles accounts, he's going to settle accounts with you too. That's right. Come That's on. Right. So you get to make a choice. Do you want to enjoy temporarily seeing somebody get their account settled and then have your number called? <laughs> Let it go. Right. Amen. The scandal line is you want to see them get paid back for what they did. And then that pumpkin is holding you in that place where the, something's going to happen. Amen. Let it go. Let that pumpkin go. Let my pumpkin go. And then Jesus verse, you write this down, Luke 17, one said, then Jesus said to his disciples, it's impossible, it's impossible, but that offenses will come. Mm -hmm. So, and so can, can you get, get this to your head? I'm not, I know you're not dumb, you're smart people, you're full of Holy Ghost, I'm not talking down to you. Amen. But listen, we got, this is something you got to get, burn in your mind. Offenses are going to come. Don't let that go. But be remembering, 
What do you do with them? What do you do with the defense cone? This is your this is your defense from offense. What do you do? Let it go. Let it go. Sure. You actually just access just we're we'll gonna do this stuff. Just kind of close your eyes. If we will, if we can do it. It'd be real spiritual if we could just all you know get the Holy Ghost. And you could see all these people that you got offensive against. You could just actually let it go. But you can just remember what I'm saying because I ain't got, I'm running out of time. All right, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It, it'd be sheer offended at yourself. Offended at God. Let it go. Let it go. Let God trust God. It's, you're, you're using faith. God, then God's going to take, he's a just God. That's right. Amen. And he's going he's to forgive. The last verse, <clears throat> if I can find it, this, I want you to turn there and, and this is it. Okay? Luke 23, 34. Luke what? Luke 23, 34. I, I like, I'm going to plant some, I want to plant some seeds for you to remember that. If you, this will help, this will help you when, when this stuff happens. This is not going to make, just hearing this is not going to make offenses go away. It's not going to make tears away. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's probably, I ain't going to prophesy it. Something's going to offend you pretty soon. You will be tested. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the bad thing about it, sitting under teaching. There's always a test. Including the teacher. But thank God God's grace is more than enough. Say it's more than enough. Amen. I'm going to overcome. I don't know. Amen. Amen. Let that plunking go. We ought to make some bumper stickers up. Harvest Faith Church. Let that pumpkin go. <laughs> Boy, I bet we can have some people come in here. Huh? They'd be coming in and say, what? And we're looking at a bunch of nuts. They already think they're nuts. Let my pumpkin go. Let my pumpkin go. This is what Jesus said. When Jesus hung on the cross. How many of y'all believe that Jesus deserved to die? Did anybody ever believe Jesus deserved to die? Yeah. Do you believe he, he deserved to be beat? Until Paul before he was ever crucified. <coughs> Do you? Would you say that Jesus was wrong? Yes. yes. And yeah, you take an innocent person and do that kind of stuff to him. Well, that's wrong, man. That just ain't right. You agree? Well, it, it's his Jesus' attitude. Now, I just have to say this. It's, as he is, so are you in this world. Amen. <clears throat> this is what Jesus said, hanging on the cross. He done been beat, unrecognizable, by a stripes or heel. He, said, he hung him on the cross. And this is one of the things he said. He said several things. This is what he said. He said, but Jesus, Luke 23, 34. You want to get a tattoo? Get this tattooed on you. Amen. <laughs> but Jesus was saying, he said, Father, Abba, Papa, <coughs> Daddy, Amen. forgive them. Golly. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you get the, can you get that? I mean, you know, he's not. This, we say so many things, just say things. We say things we don't intend to say. Right? You know, the Bible teaches about this one. Of our, when we give our confession, we should have put intent with it. Mm -hmm. Intend to get a good job. Intend to get your bills paid. Mm -hmm. get, they don't just be mouthing off religious stuff. Intent. That's right. That's right. Amen. Jesus didn't just like offhandedly say, Father, forgive him. That's right. He intended. Jesus, Jesus invented Mark eleven twenty three. Amen. He has what he says. Amen. He said this. He said, "Father, forgive them." That's right. Mm. If he hadn't said that, the blood of Jesus mm. would be required in our hands. And then he clarified. That's true. Can you something? 
you know, he, he, he's God. He clarified it. He says, he said, he said, this, and I, he said, for they do not know what they're doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. now, and this is why, I, this is why I, I get back to, to that church that we learned. They said to, to do this, forgive people, say this. Say, it's the Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive them. Whether they deserve it or not. Whether they deserve it or not. Because you forgave me. Because you forgave me. And I didn't deserve it either. I did not deserve it either. Amen. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. And, in, and remember that, that when people are offending you, they don't know what you're doing. That's true. That's true. They mean it. Hurt you don't when you do it, you, and when you do it. That's sure. right. You don't know what you're doing. If you, if you, if you, and you, now you've got a more understanding now how vicious offense is. Mm -hmm. you, you can think about it. And so you won't intentionally offend or try to just offend somebody to be offended. You, in fact, if you start walking in this grace of God that's going to be released here on you, you're going to, you're actually going to start going, finding ways to go around offending people. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about becoming a doormat or, or just not speaking your mind. You know, some of the times you don't need to speak your mind because That's you right. ain't got that much mind to be giving them away no matter what. Right? <laughs> Amen. Mm. That's right. Oh, but they offend you. Mm -hmm. I just want to give them a piece of my mind. Don't give them too much. You ain't got a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, politics, stuff. You know, you 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 can even be right. I've also said this. Oh, well, I give this Ted Hansen. If you shout out to Ted Hansen, I learned this from him. He said it's not about right or wrong. It's about life. That's right. You can be as right about your political issue as you want to be, mm -hmm. but you can make you can hurt for money. That's right. And, and make them mad at you where they won't talk to you, and you might be their only lifeline to Jesus. Amen. You ain't got to be right about every damn thing. That's right. You ain't right. I ain't right. Paul wasn't right. He, he said that. He said, I, he said, I pursue this one thing. He said, the righteousness of God yeah. is found in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And ain't nobody of it. Ain't nobody right. The only way we are right is through him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's why we got to hang on to him. That's right. Amen. Amen. Go get the hell out of there. Amen. Let's stand up. <coughs> Jesus said, prepare them for battle, quote them for destiny, and give them a future hope. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Father's in the house today. Praise God. That is in the house. Papa. <laughs> you feel that anointing go off? Mm -hmm. Or that Papa? You're doing yeah. your worship of Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Got your number of in the top of the house. She call her Messiah. Teach the Lord. Yeah, that is in the house. Papa walked away. Papa always got a big job. Yes. Amen. She got on my My prayer this year is I'm going to see some people just get drunk and cook. Amen. I mean, I ain't talking about no liquor. You know, I'm not talking about alcohol. I don't drink. Ain't because I don't want to, but I can't. <laughs> I don't want to die. I got to live. Amen. 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 I can't drink, or and I choose not to. I guess I can drink. Good. Don't kill myself. But I choose to live. Amen. I got, I've got something left to do on choose this planet. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. so I choose life. Amen. Don't ever choose something to kill you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Have no sense to that. Praise the Lord. I pray though that, that, that this year is a year, that, and I'm praying today. <clears throat> the Lord said. If somebody you told me to believe, he said, believe that I want to pull my spirit out on all flesh. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, I, I, and I want my sons and my daughters to prophesy. Amen. 
So uh, just I want to tap in that right now. Holy Spirit, I pray you for our spirit. Yes. Uh, if, if there's flesh in here, pour it out. Yes. The yes. Spirit is the presence of God. Yes. Take time to experience the presence of God. Holy Ghost. She kind of glory. She kind of my cousin. Each day, 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 each day. Yeah. Uh, I hear it. Uh, hear it. Where's my blessing coming? Ain't it right? Mm. That's you, isn't it? Uh, I heard that. Mm. Hey, where's my blessing coming? I don't know, sister, when it's coming. <laughs> I can't tell you. Your blessing's coming. Exactly. Your blessing. I know what you're you, uh, Over it. It's going to happen. Don't be discouraged. Oh, y'all, yeah, you, you don't look discouraged. You say it was my when my blessing comes. Quit saying that. Say, my blessings come. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Bless come on. Here. Call those things and beat out. Call those things and beat out. Yes. Amen. He caught sight out of my side. He goes. She caught her sight. They must say they lay each that guy he don't know. Oh, oh, she. <laughs> Oh, my blessings come. <laughs> you know, it's good to be blessed. I like to be blessed. I'll pardon you, but I'm blessed. Amen. Mm. Excuse me. Take your blessings, sister. She caught my son. Well, let's pray for him. Come here, let's pray for him. Come on, come on. You don't mind, do you? You mind? Hmm? Do you mind? Hey, you little bit. Go on. Let it go. Come on, lay hands on her. There you go. Father, bless her. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, she's been waiting a long time. She's yes. got some of it. She's got a little bit and a little of time, Lord. Yeah, but, Lord, I'm praying right there. Now. And I'm asking this, Lord. Yes. I'm, this, I'm, this ain't just saying the Lord. I'm asking. I'm not asking. But, Lord, you put something you must put on my heart. Oh, there it is. Oh, 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 and yeah. to bless this woman. Yeah. Yeah. She's a blessing. Y'all got she's a blessing. She is a blessing. Yeah. 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 Lord, I thank you. You bless her. Lord, yes, Lord. Lord yes. bless her. Bless her with a blessed release. Yes. Lord, the shackle, the ties, and vines, Lord, break it in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord. I see a little crack in the ground. I see it in a, in, a, in a dry land. I see a little crack in the ground. And I see some, a little bit of moisture coming up on that crack. Look at this. It's beginning to bubble. It's beginning to bubble. It's beginning to bubble. It's beginning to bubble. Oh! It's going to come from a spring into a, a vegetarian car, a river, a mighty river, a mighty river flowing out of your heart. Oh, there's a river flowing out of your heart flowing to many people, many people. I tell you what, your prayers are being answered. You might not see them right now in your life, but the, what you're praying for others is, is happening. The, the, I, that's what I'm seeing right now. Oh, yeah. What you, don't you, the Lord, the Lord said, I believe the Lord said, yeah, I believe the Lord said, your prayers, your prayers are being heard yeah. and they're being answered. Yeah. Oh, what you, what you praying for? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, uh, 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 an explosion 
of, of power coming forth from your house, going throughout your neighborhood, spreading out. I can see, I can see crackheads. I can see, I can see people you know, falling down under the power of God. Yeah! In Jesus' name, I'm still running like cockroaches. They're scattered in Jesus' name because the power of God and the angels of God mounting over your house in Jesus' name. I bless you in the name of God. In Jesus' name. Safety, preservation, soundness in the name of Jesus. Money come right there. Come. I'm calling it money come. God's grace and a, a cloak. A cloak, like a like a like a like a robe. Like a robe. And it drove the ground wherever you walked. God's grace just spread out. Spread out. Yeah. And you, I saw you walking wow. through the neighborhood, and as you yeah. as you walked, this light and life just spread out that cloak. Yeah. Right. I tell you, it's like your, your house, like it's like some kind of. It went right off in your house. It went like ripples, like that. It just, when, when, when it did, I saw people, like, I saw, I actually saw, like, a, you know, a crack head, you know, and get going, whoa, and start running, and you get fall out of the fire, God. You get something. I'm telling you. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. She got off my side. Huh? Yes. Yes, you gotta be in front of the Okay. Y'all ready? Yes. Can we make a real quick announcement about Hope's show? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys, we're having a. How many of y'all remember Becca and Henry's daughter, Hope? Yeah. She grew up in this church, just such a blessing. Well, and, um, poor, unfortunate matter it is. We can hear Jennifer. I'm going to hold it anyway. <laughs> okay. I think y'all can hear me anyway. I'm pretty loud. But anyway, so Hope is having um, her first baby. She has um, two stepchildren mm -hmm. already. Um, but I, Becca and I were talking, and I got really excited about doing a baby shower for Hope because um, I found out in talking with her that her husband's actually going to be deployed for the first year of the baby's life. And so she'll be, you know, a single mom for the first year. And I know how it feels to be a single mom. I know how it feels to be a woman whose husband is far away and can't help, you know. Um, and so I really feel like, you know, blessing her socks off. So um, we're gonna have a baby shower for the ladies next door next week um, on Sunday, right after the service. Yes, which I know is Super Bowl Sunday. Two weeks. It's not next week. No, I'm sorry, two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. And we know that it's Super Bowl Sunday. It don't come on until later on. Right, it doesn't come out until later on. If any of you ladies are having a party, make sure to keep your husbands happy by getting everything ready way in advance. He always talking to me. And he Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so if anybody is and you need some recipes or something that can be prepared beforehand, ask Pamela. Anyway, so we're going to have for the ladies chili and some other stuff over there and just try to bless Hope. We really just want to be a blessing to her. But two weeks. Two weeks. February 4th on Super Bowl Sunday. So right after the service, we'll go over there, we'll eat, we'll have fun, we'll um, bless her, 
and then everybody can go home and watch the Super Bowl. There you go. Okay. Super Bowl. I got, I'm not a big Congress. football. Congress. I only watch football when my dad had money. Praise the Lord. Let's start with this. Let's, all right, ready? Yeah. And forgive. Y'all don't forgive, right? Let go of that point. Amen. <laughs> Let's say this together. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a lot about it. Father, Father, I forgive people. I forgive people. I forgive people. I forgive people. In my life. In my life. Father, Father, I forgive people. I forgive people. In my life. In my life. That have offended me. That have offended me. Whether they deserve it or not. Whether they deserve it or not. Because you forgave me. Because you forgave me. Jesus forgave me. Jesus forgave me. But I didn't deserve it. Lord, I release them now. Lord, I release them now. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. And this walk with you. And this walk with you. Help me to continually. Help me to continually. Release people. Release people. Into their destiny. Into their destiny. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Lord, we bless you. Father, bless them, Lord. Yes, Father. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bless them. Make your face to continually shine on them and give them grace and give them peace. And bless them real good this week, Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.